Hello, ladies, gentlemen, everyone between and beyond. My name is Taylor, and welcome back to the Overachievers Podcast, episode 20... Hang on, wait. What episode would this be? Oh, shit, this would be 23. I gotta do that again. Okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, yeah, I had 20... Yeah, okay, okay. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond. My name is Taylor, and welcome back to the Overachievers Podcast, episode 23, The First Fantasy. Joining me today is our regular guest, arguably co-host in some regards, uh, please help me welcome John. It's John. Yeah, it's been a it's while John. since I've done this. I feel like. Well, okay. So you were you were featured in episode twenty. Twenty one. No, you episode twenty with with Robbie when you guys did play up. Oh, that's that's kind of recent, I guess. I don't know. It just feels like then, a while. Maybe it's been a while since like it's been like the two of us. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because yeah, we we had episode twenty with you guys. I had episode 21 with Nax HPL for uh, Demon Souls, and I had episode 22 featuring a different Final Fantasy game, which, by the time this goes out, will obviously have already been revealed, uh, with Britlin. Oh, interesting. Wow. Back-to-back -back Final Fantasy. Was it Final it was Fantasy 2? <laughs> it was not Final Fantasy 2, as much as I wish. I, I assume it's a later one. <laughs> it was indeed. Um, it was actually... Uh, oh, boy. Final Fantasy 16. Slightly later than the one I'm talking about today. Spoilers, just, I'm talking about a, a Final little. Fantasy game. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess we never got into that. Well, I mean, the, it's, it's in always the in the title. And it's so, in the like, thumbnail. People should know. People, people can read, right? My, my audience is literate, right? God, I hope so. You never know. I hope so, too. <laughs> Do you have to be able to read to use YouTube? No. I mean, <laughs> in theory... Maybe yeah, unless up, you're I just guess. looking at like the, the thumbnails and you're just like, oh, pretty picture, click on that. Could be, could be. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as we've completely derailed this intro. Uh, John, what, uh, what game are you going to be talking about today? <laughs> uh, as I sort of alluded to, and as the thumbnail, if you can read, should be telling you, and if the... Oh, no, if the title, if you can... It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about... Final Fantasy 1, but the, the pixel remaster of Final Fantasy 1 that I played on PC. Okay, and when did this pixel remaster come out? Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it came out, Taylor, July 28th, 2021. Wait, I came out in July of 20... What? You're out? Congrats. This can't I mean, know. <laughs> I, f I, I would hope so. I, I feel like I need to know first. <laughs> You'd hope so. Um, yes, the the Final Fantasy uh, Pixel Remasters 1 to 6 uh, were released on PC at least in uh, 2021. I assume that's they... so good. I, I just assume they all came out like same same time uh, on all the platforms because I know it was on like Switch and PS4 probably. I would assume so, but like it's just weird to me that like before you had tweeted about it um, and before you had like made known. That this was made me know that this was a thing. I had no idea that, this, that these came out. I feel like as like yeah, pixel remasters. I think on PC they kind of flew under the radar. Like uh, on Switch, they made like a, a physical cartridge with all six games mm. in one, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I know previous podcast guest Whiskey Mongoose uh, bought the Switch version and is, is planning on streaming them at some point or oh. just, just playing them maybe. Um, I, okay. Yeah, I, I feel like I didn't realize they were on PC until, like, maybe 2023. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, that's not great marketing. <laughs> it's it's Square Enix. They, they're very interesting with their marketing sometimes, aren't they? That's true. Like, I didn't even... I'm genuinely... I'm not gonna lie. I did not realize... I also didn't look it up. Until the Steam Spring Sale that the Final Fantasy VII remake, um, like, the first part, is on Steam. Oh yeah, because it, it was it Epic exclusive. I don't. I didn't even. Know I don't it even know PC, anymore. To be with you. <laughs> I just thought it was yeah. like a PS5 exclusive. I think. I think it was for a while, and I think there's like at the time of recording, like I think the second part of the third part literally just came out. But I also don't know what platforms it's on because I feel like their marketing's really not good. So that was the second part, and I I almost guarantee that's a PS5 exclusive. Really? I thought for sure. I mean, if you <laughs> if you go on Steam, if you go to the store and you type Final Fantasy, it is a fucking going show. There's so much Final Fantasy stuff on there. Oh, isn't that the truth? 
It is. But uh, uh speaking of which, have you ever played um like have you ever played the original Final Fantasy 1? No, this is this my 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 time playing the Final Fantasy 1 Pixel Remaster is the first time I've ever played a mainline Final Fantasy game. Okay. I think I played a spin-off on the DS. And that is the only Final Fantasy thing I'd ever played until this year, 2024. When, uh... I, I've had Final Fantasy VII on Steam for a while, just never got around to playing it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then... I think I, I saw that the Pixel Remasters were out, and I, like, kept my eye on them. And then, like, a month ago, or like a month and a half ago, uh, they got their first sale on Steam, and I was like, okay, fine, I'm gonna spend, like... 70 bucks on all six of them and I, I just I just bought them and I'm glad I did because I'm, I'm loving them but uh no I haven't played any of the many many versions of Final Fantasy 1. Interesting so have you have you played like any of the other pixel remasters thus far yet or have you just kind of finished the first one and are, are on a cooling off period? So I finished the first one while I was on vacation when I only had my Steam Deck with me and mm -hmm. didn't have like a ton of games. Like I wasn't playing games too much on vacation, but I'd play like a little bit before I went to bed at night, like I do when I'm back home. Um, yeah, that makes sense. And so I finished Final Fantasy 1, and I thought right, might as well just jump right into Final Fantasy 2. So I, I started 2 up, uh, finished that at the time of recording like a week ago. Uh, oh. I think took two days off, and then just started Final Fantasy 3 last night. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, when you say finished, did you also get all the achievements? Because I don't, I don't remember seeing a tweet about that one. I did tweet that one. I tweeted it as a reply to my first oh. Final Fantasy tweet. I don't know if that reduced visibility or anything. I would uh, imagine so, yeah. Maybe it did. Maybe I should do separate ones. But yes, I did all achievement Final Fantasy 2 as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So... What you're telling me is when you've done all six, we just need to have a mega episode where you discuss the entire collection? Potentially, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd be down to do, like, one as its own episode, and then, like, two to six as another episode. Yeah, I'd, I'd love that. That'd be awesome. Okay, okay. okay. Anyway, future plans aside, uh, how many achievements does, does the, I guess technically the remake have, because I don't know if the original, which, by the way, came out in 1987. Oh my, 87? This game's older than me. <laughs> Did you just realize that? I mean, I always thought it was the Final Fantasy series were like around 30 years old, but I didn't realize they were like older than 30 years. Jeez. Dude, Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997. Meaning it will be 27 no. this year. Did it really? <laughs> yes. Because it was I was four just when at the Final Fantasy VII came out? Yes. <laughs> this is my. I to be fair, Final Fantasy, for some reason, is a series that completely passed me by. Like I said, this is my first time playing a mainline Final Fantasy series. I've known mm -hmm. about it since I was a kid, because like you'd hear about Final Fantasy, Legend of Zelda, Pokemon, like those are the big series. But completely passed me by, so no, I didn't really realize how old it was. <laughs> I, okay, okay, so another question then, and we're going to get back to that previous question that we just bulldozed through. Did you ever have a PlayStation console as a kid? I didn't have a console as a kid until mm. the GameCube. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely One of didn't the best have consoles a... in existence. GameCube was great. Uh, definitely didn't have a PS One. Uh, my neighbor here in Calgary had a PS Two, so I mm -hmm. would play a couple of games on there. Um, and then in two thousand eight or something, I bought a PS Three with my own. Callaway Park earned money. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my that's first, a, that's first a deep summer cut job. for the Calgary and Alberta viewers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, just a, a little theme park just outside of Calgary, and that was my first job. And, uh, you know, didn't didn't have any expenses at that time because I was like 14, so I bought a PS3. <laughs> oh, the dream. Yeah. And then, and then since then, I have actually had like every Sony console, even though I'm not. Hmm. much of like a sony fanboy uh i got a ps4 late into its life cycle with mm -hmm. sunny side paychecks <laughs> oh man those were the, uh, those were not the days 
those were not the days. And then I bought a PS5 last summer, and mm -hmm. I also bought a, a Vita off eBay, which I love. The Vita's awesome. Um, oh, wow, okay. But yeah, I never had a PS1 or a PS2, but I did get the PS1 Classic, the little mini console, because I love the mini mm. consoles. You Yeah, you've got a couple of those, don't you? I've got four of them. I've got all the best ones. Oh my ones. god. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like, especially as a kid, what you played was heavily determined by either the console you owned or the console that your friends owned when you were at least allowed to play on them. Because I had yeah. plenty of friends who had PlayStations. I, I was more of a Nintendo 64 kid then GameCube, then Xbox 360. So, like, a couple of my friends had PlayStations, so I had some exposure to those classic franchises, but not as much as, obviously, they did owning the the consoles. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, uh, obviously, my, my childhood friend was Robbie, previous guest. Um, so, like, I would go around, around to his house all the time, and he did have a PS2. And I'm guessing he probably had a PS1. He had all of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Even though he had a PS2, whenever I went around to his house, we were playing GameCube. It was always Smash Bros. or um, Zelda Four Swords Adventure, which was so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and just Pokemon, like watching each other play Pokemon sometimes. Um, so yeah, like yeah, we played like a little games. bit of PlayStation, but like you said, we mostly played Nintendo. So that kind of were those those were the games I played growing up. Even though I didn't get into games as early as I wanted to. <laughs> That's fair. No, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'd i have to look back at the old PS2 catalogs. I don't know how many of them were co-op. I know a lot of them were, like, were couch co-op available, but I feel like Nintendo was just more of the kind of friend or group console at the time. Um, and you had a lot of good multiplayer, well, not even multiplayer, uh, but, like, competitive experiences on PlayStation, but you had fewer cooperative ones. Yeah, I think I think that's probably right. PS yeah, PS2 was kind of the I don't know, more solo games and, and GameCube was mm -hmm. more like party games, I guess. Mm-hmm. Alright, so so back to the back to the original one, because I these these games didn't even come out originally on PlayStation consoles, it's just the easiest comparison I have. Um how many achievements does the remaster contain? So, so I, yeah, this game originally came out on the NES, which obviously did not have achievements. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know how many versions have achievements, um, but this, the Steam version, which is the same as uh, whatever other versions of the Pixel Remaster, uh, it has only 24 achievements, which is not very many. No, it doesn't seem like it. What, what do we say our normal is? Like 40 to 50, kind of? So this yeah. is almost like half of our normal? Yeah, which is crazy to me. But uh, oh, sorry, just before just before we started recording, Taylor like got on the call. He said, "Wow, your game has boring achievements. So uh, it's, maybe it's a good thing they didn't go more than twenty four. Yeah, that's fair. And I think I think what it was too is the game. I now keep in mind I've never played this game. I have not watched footage of this game quite yet, so I don't know how it plays. I have watched a full playthrough of." Strangers of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origins, Strangers of Paradise, which I did want to ask you about because, a fun fact, that was episode 7 of the podcast, also featuring Britland, so she is only oh, okay. on for two Final Fantasy games, but anyway, have you, like that game, apparently, according to a lot of people, A, made a mockery of Final Fantasy, B, made a mockery of, especially Final Fantasy 1, um, but I don't, so I don't know how the original story played out and how much they could have done in terms of the creativity around the achievements, but we will certainly get into that. So, I guess my really long rambling lead into this is, have you played Strangers of Paradise? Uh, I guess that counts as a spin-off, so that wouldn't be counted in my this is the first time I'm playing a mainline Final Fantasy game, but no, I haven't. Um, Fair. Did, wasn't Strangers of Paradise like almost like Souls-like E? A little bit, but apparently it felt horrible and like all... Oh. <laughs> Like, they, they turned the main character, so you played as Garland. It was kind of meant to be, like, <gasps> almost a prequel to the to Final Fantasy 1, I, I guess. Uh, but he says, like, he swears every second line, and, like, his friend's like, Garland, are you okay? He's like, you know, F off, like, I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking to you. Wow, and really? He just did complete, yeah, he's a complete jerk. I don't Interesting. know why. I, I mean, 
it, Final Fantasy is so hard to get into and like I'm just like dipping my toes in so like I'm not even looking at the later games or like any of the spin-offs at this point. Um, mm -hmm. But if if that one is related to the first game, I'm more interested now. <laughs> what I would say is look up reviews, watch some videos. Heck, go, and I'll link in the description when this one goes up. Go to episode 7 of the podcast with Britlin. She will rant about this game. Interesting. But she got all achievements. <laughs> she did. And she hated okay. it. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'll, um, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm playing so far, so I think I am gonna branch out eventually, but it's a long way to go. There's, I don't know if you know this, there's a one or two Final Fantasy games. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to think of the number of how many of them are not numbered entries. Yeah, exactly. Even just the numbered so entries. <laughs> Yeah, we're up to 16 on numbered entries, and even that includes 10, 10, 2, uh, 13, 13, 2. God, like, I it's was not. <laughs> I, I was looking, like, because it's at the time of recording, it's the Steam Spring Sale, so I was looking, like, oh, maybe I should start getting the ones after 7, because I've only got 1 to 7. And mm -hmm. I found, like, <laughs> so Steam's got 8 and 8 remastered. Okay, I was like, find remastered. It's got 9, makes sense. Then it's got 10 and 10 too. That's not how numbering works. <laughs> nope. Not at all. And that I just gave up at that point. I was like, nope, I'm, that's as far as I'm going. Well, and there are some, like, genuine, like, numbered entries that are sequels, say, on console. Uh, but they're sequels to ones that were only handheld exclusive. Like, I think it was 13 and, like, uh, 13 Lightning something. Lightning Returns. I've got that one, actually, yeah. somehow. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of I don't have 13. To say the least. Yeah, it's a nightmare to get into. Um, okay, so obviously you have not gone back to the game given it is such a recent uh, achievement, pun fully intended. Uh, do you have plans to maybe go back to it in the future once you've beaten 1 through 6 and gotten all achievements for those? Um, it's it's kind of hard to replay JRPGs unless they do something special, I think. Like, Persona, sure. I can replay occasionally, because it's not entirely JRPG, it's got all the social aspects which are fun. Um, mm -hmm. When I was playing one, I was wondering, like, oh, I wonder if there's, like, a, a randomizer mod that might be kind of fun to mess around with. Um, but I think, like, just for a straight playthrough, no plans anytime soon. But I did enjoy it, so I, I, I might replay it at some point. Like, this is like a, a quick comfort game kind of thing. That's fair. I still... You and your randomizer mods, it, it confuses the hell out of me. I love randomizers so much. They are the best. And I hate them with it, like, with a burning what? passion. That's so because weird. Because I, I, like, I like balanced, planned experiences. And playing, not necessarily always as the developer intends, but, like, I like an experience that I can know... The, the, the challenge and the difficulty comes from a well-balanced design, not from the fact that I got garbage items and I'm facing, like, the final boss as the third enemy. <laughs> I think... I'm thinking, like, Elden Ring's probably, like, well... Elden Ring or Dark Souls 1 or Dark Souls 3 are, like, my most played randomized games. Mm -hmm. And I think I just, like, that it, it, it challenges me to think on my feet and like reroute and stuff so like okay i don't know just like if i find a certain weapon early on i like completely throw out what i was doing before that and like start building my my character around that kind of thing it's not so mm -hmm. much the challenge it's more that it gives me an opportunity to like test how well i know the game i guess which i quite like okay fair enough so, but okay. obviously that doesn't really apply to Final Fantasy 1, because I've only played it once, so <laughs> I don't know. Fair. Fair. Uh, how long did everything take you? So it took me 11.2 hours oh. for all achievements. Which okay. is interesting, because it's really hard to figure out the average, because... Because there are, like we said, this dates back to the NES, and I think there are about 15 different versions of Final Fantasy 1. Yeah, that sounds about right. And for some reason, How Long to Beat merges them all into one single entry. Mm. So it's combining the 
playtime from anything from the NES original all the way up to the Pixel Remasters. And the thing with the Pixel Remasters is that they have boost options, which are kind of in-game developer added cheats. They okay. let you um, change your experience multiplier. You can have it at zero, 0 0.5, one times, two times, or four times. And you can do the same mm -hmm. with uh, how much money you earn in game. Okay. So depending on which boosts you use and to what extent you use them is going to affect your playtime considerably. Mm -hmm. But I think I was able to narrow down the how long to beat page down to just the PC version, which said about 16 hours to 100%. And like I said, it took me 11.2 hours. Okay, interesting. So how did you did you use the boost mode frequently or was it did you do it kind of sparingly? I turned it on the moment I started the game and didn't turn it off. Not surprised, but fair. It, it, <laughs> I found the original <laughs> Final Fantasy VII was slow. I can't imagine one. Exactly. Like, JRPGs especially, up to a certain point, expected you to grind. That was just mm -hmm. part of the game. Um, it was just, just part of the culture. I feel like every single JRPG expected you to grind between levels, between areas kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not about that. I've got a million games to play still. I'm not about grinding at all anymore. Uh, even when I played the original Persona 3, which I think came out in like 2007, uh, even that one I had to put on, I think by the end of the game, I think I had like eight times experience on oh just, God. <laughs> just to avoid the grind. It was insane. So like, as soon as I saw it was an option in this game, I knew it was an old game. I just turned it on four times and let it go. And okay. four times was probably a mistake. <laughs> oh, yeah? Uh, can't yeah, really I read the text or? No, no, it's just I, I maxed, I reached max level um, by the time I got my last achievement. And I think uh... like Eve, even like two thirds of the way through the game, I hit the cap on money. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, ah, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize there was a cap, didn't realize there was a level cap or a money cap or anything. So in mm -hmm. hindsight, I probably would have just started on two times, which is what I'm doing on Final Fantasy 3 right now. Uh, but I didn't know, didn't know anything about it. So I just put on four times because I wanted to have fun with the game. <laughs> hmm. Okay, then. I mean, fair enough. So not to, not to make you feel diminished or or reduce uh your uh accomplishment i did look up specifically the pixel remaster like i typed in in google how long to beat final fantasy pixel remaster i did find a website from the gamer uh that i'll link in the description down below of this video when it goes out talking about how long to beat and then how long to 100 percent uh each of the final fantasy pixel remasters it does say for final fantasy one it takes about 9.5 hours to beat the main game and around 11 hours to 100% complete the game. Interesting. I So that, that must also be the like boost coming into play, because I think I beat the campaign at about 8 hours, and then the rest of my time was going for the last achievement. <laughs> Fair. Which we'll talk uh, about later, is... but that last yeah. achievement can really vary player to player. Mm, okay, interesting. So yeah, like I said, this will be linked in the description down below. Uh, it does include the times estimated for all six games, so uh, it will be included in this one, and if we do do an episode uh, later on down the road covering the rest of the games, I will link it there as well. Oh sweet, yeah, it'd be interesting to compare, like, the full total. Mm-hmm. So, what, let's, let's get into that, that achievement you were just talking about. What were the hardest and easiest ones for you? So the one I was just talking about, I'm saving for the least fun category. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's get into the easiest. The easiest achievement for me was called A Hero's Journey, which is where you save Princess Sarah by defeating Garland. Mm -hmm. And this happens within the first 15 minutes of the game, probably, uh, depending on how slow you play. Um, basically, you have your characters, you get control of your characters, you go into the first town, 
uh, you talk to a guard. He's like, my god, you're the heroes of light. You must come see the king. And you go see the king, and the king's like, my god, you're the heroes of light. You must save my daughter, Princess Sarah, who's been kidnapped by Garland. And you're like, okay. Right, very, so you, very basic. Very, very basic. You leave the town. You walk, like, a tiny, tiny ways to a little, um, a little area. Like, it's such a small... The encounter rate in Final Fantasy 1 is ridiculous. Like, you get encounters so often. And I think oh. on the way to, like, this first location, you only encounter, like, two or three enemies. Like, it, it does not take any time at all to get there. Huh. So you get over there. You just, you walk in the front door. You walk straight. Bam. There's Sarah. There's Princess, uh, Princess Garland. <laughs> there's Princess Sarah and Garland. <laughs> quick, quick mod that. Quick modern, modern Princess Garland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you do you do your first boss fight against Garland. You kill him. You talk to Sarah. You get warped back to town. You talk to the king. He's like, "Great, that was awesome." You get the achievement. It literally happens oh. so quickly. It's essentially the prologue to the game kind of thing. Um, and after oh. you get this, the game kind of opens up. But it's it's really really easy to get. Interesting. And it's also like he's the first boss, and he, it's also it's super easy. Mm -hmm. I um, I watched a speedrun of this version with it, it's in a, its own category where they're allowed boosts. Okay. And uh, one of the other boosts you can have is you can disable encounters, which is a godsend for playing this game because, like I said, the encounter rate is really high, and if you're backtracking, sometimes you just don't want encounters, so you can turn them off, which is awesome. Oh, that's nice. And so the speedrun. Disables encounters pretty much the entire run. And so they start the game, get control of the characters, they go right to Garland, they fight him at the lowest level, and easily kill him. So, like, he's, he's a very easy first boss. Fair enough, yeah, that sounds... <laughs> that sounds almost disgustingly easy. It is. It, it, was a nice, it was a nice gentle intro to this game that I really knew nothing about. Fair. Fair. Okay, so the hardest is a really weird one. <laughs> oh no. The hardest one for me <laughs> was an achievement called Hidden Game, which is where you play the 15 puzzle game. Okay. And the 15 puzzle game is, do you know those sliding tile puzzles where you've got tiles on a board and you've got one empty slot and you can like move tiles into that slot and you have to mm -hmm. make a picture doing that oh yeah 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 Yeah. so this one you've got 15 tiles and you've got to arrange them in the right order okay and i am so awful at these puzzles and so am i trust me just just the worst but luckily for this achievement you don't even have to win the game you just have to play the game oh it's one of those it's one of those which is great but you can only do this game when you're on the open sea on your ship, which you get pretty early in the game. But mm -hmm. <laughs> but the guide I looked up had the wrong button inputs to trigger this game. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and so it's not a hard achievement by any means, but it was surprisingly difficult for me because I was like, it's not working. What am I doing? I'm on the sea. I've got my boat. I'm pressing buttons, and I like I looked up, I think a just a Steam guide, and had like completely opposite button combinations, and that worked for me. But <laughs> it was just a weird achievement to struggle with. That yeah, that is really strange. So is there? Did you find a correct guide, or did you just happen to like get it, and there was nothing out there that was accurate? No, I, th I think I think the version on the Steam forums or on the, the Steam guide section was accurate. Okay. And then I think the walkthrough I looked up online wasn't. <laughs> okay, I will... I, as long as I remember, I will make sure that is linked in the description down below. Okay. Because, yeah, that is... Oof. <laughs> it that was weird. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. At least, at least you didn't have to complete the game, because I would have probably not got all achievements if I had to do that. <laughs> oh, yikes, that's not good. No, I hate those puzzles. That's honestly, so do I. I totally, I totally get it. 
<laughs> okay, so so now I'm curious. What were the most and least fun? Let's do let's do most fun because I really want to build the anticipation for this least fun. Yeah, least fun is gonna be least fun is what this all achievement kind of centers around, and I probably wouldn't be talking about this game if it wasn't for this achievement. Oh my god. Okay. So, most fun for me was one called Token of Courage, which is mm -hmm. where you gain titles of courage from Bahamut. Okay. And basically, when you start the game, you get to choose, um, you've got four heroes, you get to choose their classes, and you start off as, like, these cute little versions. Uh, like, you've, you've probably recognized, like, the, the Black Mage is quite an iconic uh, character design, but it's very cute. Mm-hmm. And when you go and do this little side quest, uh, getting the, the titles of courage, your heroes uh, kind of evolve, for lack of a better word. They, they turn into the, the big grown-up versions of their characters. So you go from playing with these cute little chibi kind of characters to these badass-looking heroes. And it's just a very, very cool achievement and a very cool moment to go from these small little fellas to actual badass heroes. That's awesome. Yeah, I thought it was a really fun one. You, you talk to a dragon, he calls you heroes, and you become awesome. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, that sounds like the most stereotypical JRPG thing ever, but it's not It's not a bad thing. There's a reason it's so stereotypical. It's because that's pretty damn cool. And this was 1987, right? Like, it wasn't stereotypical at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, so now I need to know. I need to know what is this least fun. Okay, so least fun for me was called Field Research Professional, which is where you complete 100% of the bestiary entries. And yep, so okay. the bestiary... <laughs> I was this one. <laughs> the bestiary is kind of like your Pokedex, I guess. Um, it's a list of every... Um, Monster, encounter, creature in the game, ranging from the basic wolves and goblins all the way up to the bosses. Mm -hmm. And I think a bit, there were 128 in Final Fantasy 2. I think it was like 126, 124, something like that in uh, oh, wow. Final Fantasy 1. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, as you're playing through the game, you'll get most of them. Okay. Uh, just just from playing, just from uh, as long as you don't turn off encounters too often, you should get most mm -hmm. of them. And when I beat the game, I was missing three. Three okay. or four. Three or four. I think it was three. So I turned to a guide to look up the ones I was missing. Two of them were slightly rare. Um, I think it took me probably about ten minutes to, to find each of them. Because um, okay. it, it's like Pokemon, you you walk around in a dungeon, you'll randomly have a chance to have an encounter, and you just need to hope mm -hmm. it's it's the right one for your your bestiary. Okay. So I got the, those two, and then I was missing one. Oh no! And the one I was missing was called War Mech, which okay. was an optional super boss. Yeah, and. It only spawns in one very specific location in the game, and okay. depending, it, it's it's literally before the second to last boss is uh, mm -hmm. where it spawns. It's like one specific floor in this one dungeon. <laughs> oh no. And it, it, it's, it's not a problem to get there, because after I beat the game, I literally just turned off encounters, made my way through the dungeon until I got to that floor, turned on encounters, ran around trying to find it. Mm -hmm. And depending on the version of the game, its encounter rate changes. Oh no. So the highest encounter rate, which I don't remember which version it is in, I think it's like the PS2 or something, mm -hmm. is 3 out of 64 which is something like 5%, I think. Okay, so I've, I've heard of worse odds, but it's still not good. Not good, but 5% shouldn't take too long, right? Yeah. But I thought that the version I was playing had those odds. For some reason, I think I, I must have misread a forum or something. Oh, no. So, 
So I thought I was getting the 3 out of 64 or 5% odds. Okay. It turns out every other version, including the Pixel Remasters, has a 1 out of 64 chance oh, no. to spawn, which is something like 0.6%, less than 1%. Oh, no. <laughs> and so by the time I found out what his actual spawn rate was, I think I'd already spent two hours trying to make him spawn. And I, I think by this point, like, I'd maxed out my characters. They're all level 99. I was just... You'll, you'll hopefully see it in the video now. I, I split my footage in half, pretty much. And the okay. last half of the footage was uh, replicating the search for Warmag. <laughs> oh, no. So potentially in the video right now, you're seeing me run up and down this corridor over and over, auto-attacking through all the encounters. And this is what I did for quite a while. Oh, no. And I, I think if I'd known when I started that it was going to be such a low spawn rate, and if I'd known how long it was going to take, I might not have done it. <laughs> okay. But obviously, by the time I found out I'd been doing it for two hours, sunken cost fallacy, I wasn't going to give up. I was going to finish it off. And also, yeah, like I said, I was... Fair. I was on vacation at this point. Uh, I had my Steam Deck with me, so if ever I had some downtime, like people went for a nap after we'd had too much food for lunch or something like that, <laughs> yeah. um, I would just pull pull the Steam Deck out, get back to running up and down that corridor, uh, just do it for like 20 minutes, and then when everybody was ready to do something again, I would just put it away. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it was really mindless, but I didn't really mind because. I didn't have my PC, I wasn't really doing too much else, so I just kind of kept at it. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my family got kind of used to me doing it, so like, <laughs> they, they, I, like I told them I'm trying to find this this monster, so like, I would like pull out the Steam Deck and they'd be like, oh yeah, you're gonna go in to look for that monster again. <laughs> did, did you not just ask them for help? Like, hey dad, I'm, I gotta do this thing for the next couple hours, can you... Can you just run around looking for this monster for me? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't recruit anyone else. I think I was thinking about it because um, I, I worked two of the days I was down there. So I think theoretically yeah. I was going to uh, like ask someone to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey mom, I, uh, gotta, I gotta go to work. Uh, can you just hunt for this fictional monster for me, please? <laughs> yeah, someone find this war mech for me. Um, and then one evening I just sat down. I think we'd just finished dinner or whatever. Sat down, yeah. everyone was in the, the living room, pulled out the Steam Deck. I was like, okay, here we go, I'm gonna be here for another little while. And I think after about five minutes it showed up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, it's here, my god! And everyone was like, wow, you, you did it! <laughs> oh man. So I think the total time it took me to find Warmech was about four and a half hours. Oof. Ooh. Four and a half hours of just running up and down this corridor, getting encounters, auto-fighting my way through it because I was so strong at this point, mm -hmm. and repeating for four and a half hours. Oh, wow. That's... that's... yikes. So yeah, I think if I'd known it was going to take that long, I might not have done all achievements, and I might not have done all achievements in all of the games, but... Now that I've done it in the first one and the second one, I feel like I've got to do it in all of them. <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah, that's fair th that you've gotten a taste for it. You're like, I, there's no point in not. <laughs> it would just, it would feel so weird to have all achievements in like one, two, four, five, and six, but not like three, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. So like, yeah, I feel it, like I got to do it feel, for all of them. Yeah, it would feel way too awkward to have just one out. Exactly, it would feel it would feel incomplete. So. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm very torn on whether it was a good idea to do it or not, but I think <laughs> I feel positive about it. You've gone down this road it. already. There's no there's no turning back. That's true. That's true. Uh, but yeah, that was definitely the least fun because I liked the story of the game. I liked going through the rest of the game, but just mm -hmm. running up and down this corridor was not fun at all. Yeah, yeah, that's completely understandable. Is there any way to change the encounter like spawn rate or anything? Um. 
potentially with like cheat engine, I guess, but I was just mm. playing on Steam Deck, like I couldn't yeah. mod it or anything, so not that I know. There of. were no like in-game options to speed nope. up the process. No, no, which is interesting because yeah, they've got like other boosts, like increase uh, experience and stuff, but no, nothing to get this war mech to spawn. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I was gonna ask. Does, so you said it changes depending on how far into the game you are, right? Or is it just changed based on the the game, the version of the game? It's just changed based on the version. I think there's one okay. version with higher odds, and the rest are all these one out of sixty-four. Oh, okay, so it's not like it's not like yours is the odd one out. Yours is just in place and filling in with the same pretty typical odds. Yeah, the 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 traditional odds, I guess. Mm -hmm. Gotta love tradition sometimes. I wish they'd boosted it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's painful. Fair. Yeah, it sounds like it. So. Is it safe to assume that was the rarest on the list? Yes, excluding the you got all achievements one, this was definitely the rarest. Okay, do you agree that it should be the rarest? Definitely. But <laughs> I'm really surprised how many people have the achievement. Oh yeah? When we talk about rarest achievements, I'm thinking like Dark Souls, we're normally at about like three to five percent of people have it, right? Yeah, on average, yeah. 19% of people have this achievement. What? <laughs> I frankly am shocked that 19% of players had... did the did that grind for that stupid super boss. You know what, I'm wondering if they, if they like, were playing, if they were playing on PC proper, if there was like, if they were speeding up their PC or something to increase encounter rates or the speed at which things happened, so like not necessarily increasing it in-game, but increasing their, their PC's speed somehow, just to Possibly? reduce the amount of time. Possibly? Or maybe they were using Cheat Engine, I don't know. But I think, like, the number of people who would cheat for the achievement has got to be, like, pretty minuscule, like, in the, the grand scheme of how many people have played this game. Mm -hmm. I, I just think, I was shocked when I saw 19%, and that was also... You know, I saw it was 19% before I started it, so I thought, oh, it can't be too bad, I'll go for it. Yeah, that's... yikes. Yeah, really, but really I, I surprising. Guess, I guess four hours in comparison to, like, some other rarest achievements is pretty minimal. Yeah, no, it's, it's not too bad, but I guess when you compare it to how long it took me to do the rest of the game, that was, like, 50% of my total play time, or 50% yeah. of how long it took me to beat the main game was spent doing this. Which is crazy. I, uh... You know if you're... When you're going for something like this, you start, like, doubting if it's real. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you get that, but, like, if, if I'm, like, looking for this, or, like, I remember when I was doing, uh... Like, uh, I was hatching eggs for a shiny Pokemon in a Brilliant Diamond. I, oh, like, yeah. I would doubt, like... Do I even have like a real Pokemon egg or, or something like that? Like, I would, I doubted, like, is Warmax still in the game? Because, like, it had been patched like a month ago or something. So I was like, maybe they accidentally removed Warmax from the game after this patch or something. <laughs> oh, no. And so, like, I always, like, you know, when, I, I, when I'd get my doubts, I would Google, like, have people found it? Is it real? And I saw, like, some mm -hmm. people, it took them, like, 15 hours to find it. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, 90%. Can't believe it. Yeah, that's crazy. I See, my version of that is, is this achievement accessible or is it bugged? Like, it, even if I do the thing, will I get the achievement? That's my version of, mm. does it exist? Yes. Yeah. That, God. I was, I was so glad when the achievement actually popped. Because I, <laughs> I was worried, man. too. <laughs> Imagine you find this thing, you beat it, and then just know it's you. <laughs> oh, I would have been so sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's... Yeah, that, that sucks. What Was it worse, though, than the Persona one you told me about? Completing that um, bestiary or appendix or, or whatever it was called. <sighs> Completing, like, the, the Persona compendium isn't usually too bad. But I, I do remember one achievement in Persona 4 Golden that was infinitely worse than this, so I shouldn't complain. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, there's there's always worse out there. It's a good it's they, a good lesson to take away from this. Definitely is. Definitely always worse. Okay. Fair. Fair. So, um 
is is it safe to say that was the most memorable one for you? Uh, I went for a more positive, memorable one. Um, okay. I mean, I, I guess it probably is, because I distinctly remember War Mech. <laughs> uh, but I, I put the Prophecy Foretold achievement, which is where you defeat chaos and restore peace to the world. It's just the end of the game, you beat the final boss. It was, it was memorable, because it was my first time essentially finishing a Final Fantasy game, so I thought it was a that was a cool, memorable one for me. Mm hmm. Oh, huh, that's fair. Did okay? Did you enjoy the end of the game? Yeah, it was cool. I I don't want to like talk too much about the story because it was like it was pretty interesting for such an old game. Okay, fair. Yeah, I guess in comparison with modern uh, media, the story might feel a little outplayed given that it is. Oh god, it is 30 years old in three... No, 40 years old in three years. Jesus Christ, yes, 37 <laughs> years old. So, yeah, like definitely dated, kind of, but still really yeah. cool. Fair enough, fair enough. So, is there an achievement or way... Like, is there an achievement you would remove from the game? There's nothing I would remove, but I would petition the devs to bump the spawn rate up. <laughs> fair. Fair. Back uh, but like no, this five percent. Exactly. Yeah, five percent instead of like less than one percent would be nice. Yeah, that's insane. There's no reason that it should be that low, honestly. Especially if they obviously bumped the spawn rate up on one version, but not this one. I think it'd be mm -hmm. nice if this one had it bumped up a bit. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Is there is there an achievement like is there a way of playing that you feel should have an official achievement for it? I couldn't think of anything in this game. Okay. This game's like pretty simple. Mm -hmm. That's fair. It yeah, that, like we said, it's almost forty years old, which I hate saying that, but like it games were games were simpler back then. It was a different time. Yeah, it's very very basic, quite short compared to a lot of other JRPGs. But yeah, there's not much you can go out of your way to do that wouldn't give you an achievement in this one. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Okay, well, we've kind of reached the halfway point, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're, we're very much... We I always notice that I really, I really front load these podcast episodes, and, like, you know, we're almost at an hour, and this last bit's probably going to take 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, uh, so if, if you stuck around this long, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube stuff. Really appreciate it. It really helps out. I will make sure to link John's channel, social media, and uh, previously mentioned podcast guest whiskey mongoose's twitch channel in the description down below uh shout out to whiskey uh please return my return my message about being on the podcast again you said yes i said what game and you've left me on red gonna, <laughs> gonna publicly call you out on that one. Oh, i'll text him after this <laughs> Dude, like and i know it's not malicious i'm sure he just forgot he's a busy Probably. guy and he, he, he deserves to be it's just like i'd love to have him on again we were down he was down and then just ghost I, I would just I would just bump it. I'm sure he's just missed it. Just message him again. He won't mind. Yeah, I will. I will. But I'm gonna leave this in <laughs> just on the off chance. So I, I will put listening. in the comments if he has or has not responded by the time this goes up <laughs> in a month's time. Nice. All right. So with that in mind, are you able to soft like yourself out of any achievements? Like I might have soft locked myself out of having Fitz as a guest again. <laughs> um, no, not in this one. Uh, there are. A lot of missable elements in the later games, uh, especially two. Like the guide I was following uh, specifically said, like, hey, you need to encounter these enemies or you need to find these items uh, before you do this next thing or you will miss them and you'll lock mm -hmm. yourself out of achievements. Uh, okay. But for Final Fantasy 1, no, it's it's impossible to lock yourself out of any achievements. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's good. That's always... Appreciate it, but I would be curious to know about the other ones, what you can lock yourself out of, but that will be a conversation for another day. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be an interesting so, question for uh, two to six, presumably. Yeah. So how many times do you need to play the game to get all achievements? Just the ones you... They're, like, very basic achievements. You get almost all of them just by playing the game. Um, there's no alternate endings or alternate ways of playing or anything, so just the ones. Okay. That's fair. That's I, I do like a good kind of one-and-done playthrough. Me too. It was uh, especially appealing to me that 
it was kind of short and I could just hop on to the next one. I am kind of amazed, especially with a JRPG, that it is more of a one and done style. Because Me too. so many are like you gotta play it three or four times and change the most minute things. Yeah, yeah, like I'm like I only played Persona 3 reload through once and got all achievements, but like I compare the playtime of that to the playtime of Final Fantasy One, it's like eight times, so I mean that's that's how JRPGs have, have grown and expanded over the years. Fair. Fair. Um, uh, does it feel rewarding to get all achievements in such a short amount of time? <laughs> um, like, a little bit. Um, they're, they're kind of a nice way of tracking your progress through the game. Like, I think there's achievements for opening, like, 50% of all the chests in the game. So, like, when that one popped, I was like, oh, cool, like, you know, I've, I've got half the loot. That's kind of nice. Nice to know. Yeah, that's fair. That so that would be a little good. bit. It, plus, too, it feels like a good like bite-sized experience. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice and short. It's very doable, especially with the boosts. <laughs> fair. Um. Okay. So, does the game give you anything for getting all achievements? I'm assuming not. Uh, no, not really. Like, you get to look at your 100% completed bestiary, which is kind of nice felt a little bit rewarding uh but no it doesn't give you like golden armor or whatever for getting all achievements mm -hmm. okay. i don't think they could code that in i don't think they could code in like achievement specific stuff to a 37 year old game without like drastically changing it fair yeah that makes sense i think it would just feel weird to like suddenly get like a brand new item that was just added in this version for getting all achievements or something yeah, that has to be more of like a remake as opposed to a remaster kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, does it feel... And this is going to be an interesting one because technically, I don't know when these were first introduced, but it I, I, it was, it had to be before this version of the game. But does it feel like the developers of the achievements, I will say, not of the game because it may not have been the same developers putting in the achievements, does it feel like they cared about them? Yeah, I really should have looked up which other versions had achievements, honestly. Um, but I, I only looked at the Pixel Remaster ones. Um, does it feel like they cared about the achievements? No. Uh, there's only 24 of them, which is not very many, and they're all super run-of-the-mill, like, kill this boss, kill this boss, kill this boss. And then it's like, you earned 10,000 gold. You earned 50,000 golds. <laughs> you earned 100,000 golds. Oh my god. So, no, they're they're really basic. They're they're fine. They you know, they don't do anything bad. They're I don't think they're like as bad as like Dark Souls achievements, but they're they're very run of the mill. Okay, so I was just looking at the Final Fantasy wiki. There were achievements added to the Windows phone version in 2012. What? And there are what? 18 achievements. What? <laughs> <laughs> I will link okay. this in the description down below, but like, yes, I am looking at it right now. I didn't even know Windows phones had achievements. <laughs> Neither did I. What on earth? And it had six less. Which ones did they not have, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> I, will, really I will do a comparison. I will leave in the description uh, down below what is going on with that, because I have no idea. Maybe they just cut out, like, the milestone ones, like the 10,000 gold or 50% of chests or something like that, and just kept, like, the, the boss ones and stuff like that. Maybe, but I have to imagine this might have been the first instance of them putting in achievements for this game. It must or be. Or for a version of this game. Was, I'm trying, like, what else would there be? Like, a Vita version or a PS3 <laughs> version? I don't know if those exist, but, like, those could have had achievements, but I don't know if they existed. Maybe. But according to this, hang on, um, here. Where did I see it? So, there was Steam, Origin, Epic Game Store, and Square Enix Online Store. Square At Enix least in the Online wiki, Store like, has li has store links for this particular title. Okay, okay, so there was PS3 version and a PS4 version and a PS5 version. And 
Did PSP have achievements? Because there's one of those and there's a Vita version as well. Oh god. So I'm guessing somewhere between like the three PlayStation consoles, the portable and the Vita version, they must have had achievements at some point. So I was looking it up. Probably. I looked it up quickly and mm -hmm. I don't believe, apart from this weird Windows Phone version you found, uh, I don't think any of the versions had trophies or achievements before the Pixel remasters. Oh my god, so it is literally the Windows Phone version. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, that those 18 must have been the basis for these achievements, and then they added six new ones, I guess. That's so weird. Yeah, a little bit hard to find anything on it, but I don't believe any version before the Pixel Remaster, apart from the Windows one, had achievements. All right, then. Yeah. Well, I will be uh, trying to find out what those 18 achievements were, and I will see if I can distinguish them from uh, what is in the Pixel Remaster version. I will pin a comment saying, okay, these are what's different with this. That would be interesting, yeah. So, this is kind of an odd question. I'm sure the answer is already yes. Do the achievements require you to get 100% in the game? I feel like normally I answer no to this question, but yes, this one definitely does. Um, you have to open 100% of the chests, you have to encounter 100% of enemies, yeah, you have to 100% the game. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, like, you don't have to reach max level, I guess. I don't know if that would be counted as 100%, but I think all chests, all enemies, I think that counts. Yeah, it's pretty close, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's fair. Yeah, I feel like a lot of RPGs are like that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Like, yeah, get a hundred percent of locations visited and stuff like that definitely counts as a hundred percent. Yeah. So this is gonna be one that's kind of funny given it's such an old game. Do the <laughs> achievements feel unique in the genre? Um do these achievements feel unique to JRPGs? No, not at all. Like <laughs> like I said, they're all defeat the boss, visit locations, earn money, kill creatures not at all <laughs> mm -hmm. okay yeah that's that's fair they are very they feel very generic especially nowadays yeah they are okay so what guides did you use or what guides would you recommend to people outside of the one that gave you the wrong information <laughs> so the thing with jrpgs especially old ones is for some reason they we're really bad at signposting where to go at certain points. Mm -hmm. And so I started playing this game blind, and I was doing good for the first third of the game. And then I just got to a point, I was like, I genuinely have no idea what they want me to do at this point. And mm -hmm. so at that point, I turned to a walkthrough on RPGsite.net. Okay. And they've got really good uh, minimalist guides for all the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. So that is what I started using from that point on and oh, nice. didn't stop using it. Um, mm -hmm. Especially for the later games. Like I, I mentioned earlier, it's really good at saying like, hey, if you don't do these things now, you're going to miss them later. So I wouldn't play any of these Pixel Remasters without their guides. So yeah, like RPGsite.net. Really good okay. guides for, uh, for Final Fantasy. Good to know. Good to know. I will make sure to link that in the description. And you said it was the Steam guide, right? That had the the appropriate um, button combos. Yeah, I think I think there was just in like the all achievements guide on Steam. It had the right button combinations, and okay. there was also a, a bestiary guide on the Steam forums that I used to find the last three enemies. Okay. So yeah, Steam forums were pretty good. Good to know. So, has this changed the way you look at the game now? And, like, do you regret doing it? I know you regret one achievement, but do you regret the <laughs> whole experience? Um, I, I'm still not fully sure. I'm very, very mixed on how I feel about doing that last achievement. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think I regret it. I think, okay. I think I had, I think I had fun most of the time. And, like, in the grand scheme of things, four and a half hours really isn't that bad. So, I don't think I regret it. Mm -hmm. um, did it change the way I look at the game now? I, I didn't, going into it, I didn't know there were these hidden, rare super bosses like Warmech. So, mm -hmm. 
now I think going forward I'm gonna be like more aware of it but I really didn't know that was a thing until I did this game so it's kind mm. of changed the way I looked at it a little bit yeah and I'm very okay. envious of people who encountered Warmech without having to grind for it <laughs> Yeah, imagine imagine it's like one of those things where you find it on your first try, you don't know what it is, and then the achievement pops, you're like, oh, cool. And then you're like, hey, guys, I just found this thing. And everyone's <laughs> like, I hate you. I, well, like, it, it's a super boss, right? So I feel like if you found it on your first try, it would obliterate you. Like, I killed Fair. it easily because I all of my guys were level 99 with all the best gear and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but like if if I'd found it like really early into looking for it it might have been a bit tough or if you find it uh, like the very first encounter I think it would destroy most people <laughs> mm. huh interesting yeah imagine imagine that then you find it that you don't know it kills you and then you can never find it again <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah because like, you have to yeah, beat yeah, it right to, for it to be added to the to the bestiary I think if it runs away, it also gets added. I think it's only if you die or if you run away, it doesn't get added. Hmm. Um, and I think like the very first move it used on me in the fight was it mm -hmm. tried to run away and it didn't work. <laughs> Interesting. And then I killed it in two turns because I was so strong at that point. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, if it kills you, I'm sure it doesn't add it to the beast, Sherry. Huh. Yeah. That would suck. That, that would really that suck. Would, that would really suck. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And finally, would you recommend that others go for the all achievements? Why or why not? And is there a kind of player that would enjoy or particularly hate this experience? I think if you're not put off by the idea of you might be running up and down this one character wide straight corridor for up to 10 15 hours i say go for it if mm -hmm. that bothers you i probably yeah. wouldn't do it <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah people people who hate random encounters are probably not going to want to do this because all you're doing after you've beaten the game is is doing random encounters hoping for the right one mm -hmm. but yeah, uh that I, would really that would suck <laughs> It, yeah, it's it's kind of a hard recommend, but in the grand scheme of things, it only took me like 11 hours, 11.2 hours to get all achievements. Not mm -hmm. too big of an investment, honestly. Like, it, it can be lower than that, it can be higher than that, but it's not going to be anything ridiculous like 80 hours. That's fair. Yeah, that uh, the 11 hours was kind of the most shocking in a positive way, which was nice to see. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a short, a decently short game in terms of JRPGs for getting all achievements, for sure. Okay. Alright, well, uh, before we go, John, I wanted to um, I just wanted to list off the Final Fantasy titles uh, according to the Final Fantasy wiki. Oh boy. And I wanted to see, kind of, if you still have the desire to play some of these. Oh god. <laughs> so we've got Final Fantasies uh, 1 through si uh, 1 through... Uh, 7, then we got Final Fantasy 7 Remake, then 8, 9, 10, 10, 2, 11, 11, the Zodiac Age. Uh, sorry, 11, 12, the Zodiac Age. 14, Oops. 13, 2. Light, <laughs> then Lightning Returns. So there's three 13s. Uh -huh. Final Fantasy 14, which is the uh, the MMO. Um, the Final Fantasy 15, we then have A King's Tale, Monsters of the Deep, Tactics, Type 0, Crystal Defenders, Four Heroes of Light, uh, Dissidia, Dissidia 0, 1, 2, uh, Prologus, Dissidia, and T. Uh, I'm reading the uh, Thera Rhythm or The Rhythm. All oh, those Curtain are like the, the music games. All the bravest worldwide worlds, word worldwide words. That's a that's a tongue twister. Wow. Uh, Portal app, Brave, uh, Exvius, World what? of Final Fantasy, Mobius, and of course Final Fantasy 16, and Final Fantasy Strange of Paradise. And I'm probably missing some in there. Jesus. Are you still interested in uh, <laughs> in the rest of the Final Fantasy franchise? Maybe I'd stop like just before 10 or something. Okay. <laughs> 1 to 9, because those are all just like single numbered entries. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Except as for as the, you get the double digits, you're like, nah, nah, fam. I mean, just, just 
It's Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X 2. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they just call it 11? <laughs> because they already have 11. But they they didn't make 10 2 after 11, did they? I can't remember. It's been a long time. It's just... But then they made 12, and then they made 13, 13 2, and then Lightning Returned, which is kind of like 13 3. <laughs> They'd already got away with it with uh, 10 and 10 too, but yeah, uh, I don't know. Like you, you hear like how terrible the Kingdom Hearts titles are, like how confusing those are, but Final Fantasy is not much better. No, Final Fantasy did it first. Kingdom Hearts is just copying their homework. That's true, actually. Yeah, I think you're right. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> At the should... very least, I'm going to play the Pixel Remasters and 7, and then we'll see about okay. that. Like, the remake of 7, or, like, the original 7? Well, the remake of 7 is, like, also, like, a whole new game. Like, it, it's, like, it's a remake, but it's not entirely the same story, so you do actually have to have played the original to play the remake. So I will 100% play at the original, and then we'll see about the remake at some point. Okay, okay. But there's, like, three parts, and they're, like, still coming. Like, yeah. I'm not playing that anytime soon. Yeah, that's fair. All right, well, uh, with all that in mind, plenty of future episodes to come. Thank you, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond, so much for being here. Thank you, John, for being here and talking about this. Of course, thank you for having me. I'm surprised this went as long as it did. I thought it would be quite a short episode, but I'm glad. We Honestly, so just... did I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we do kind of ramble when we're with each other, don't we? <laughs> That's fine. I, I'm a little concerned about the, uh, the you know, two to six, but we'll figure it out. Oh, that could be like a four-hour episode. That'd be great. That'll be a mega episode. I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take breaks. We'll record over multiple sessions. We'd have to. It would be bedtime for one of us, depending on what time we record. <laughs> True. All right. Uh, but yeah, well, thank you for having me. It was great. Yeah, no, it's always always a great time. Uh, John will return very shortly on the podcast. Uh, hint, Woo. hint. Wink, wink. You know, whatever. Nudge, nudge. Um, anyway, thank you for, for being here. Don't forget the... Uh, to go to John's links in the description down below. Uh, feel free to check out the podcast links, or if you're listening to the podcast, check out the YouTube link. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.